Hi everybody, my name is Nick Blake, and today we're going to be showing you guys how to build wooden parkour precision trainers. Let's get started with that. To get started, my name is Nick Blake, and I'm the facilities manager here at FIM, which basically means I build all of the stuff in the gym. Um, we've seen an interest in wanting to be able to train at home, so today we're going over an in-depth explanation as how to build a wooden precision trainer. So to get started, um, these two right here are going to be your finished examples. This is what it's going to look like at the end of the build. For our example build, it's actually not the exact same sizes. You'll notice these are a little bit different, um, but that's okay. It's the same amount of pieces, and we'll be telling you the right lengths. Uh, so what you're going to need is, first of all, you're really only going to need a drill unless you want to be cutting the wood yourself, in which case you're going to need a measuring tape and some sort of saw to be able to cut the wood itself. Um, if you don't have a saw or you don't want to cut the wood yourself, if you go to any of your local woodwork, wood purchase shops like Home Depot or Lowe's, uh, they're going to be able to cut the wood for you as you're, as you're buying it. Um, so what you're going to need is two little end pieces. That's these ones cut at one foot one little center bottom piece that's gonna be cut at 17 inches, and then one top piece that's gonna put it all together, and that's gonna be two feet long. On top of that, you're gonna need eight screws to be able to screw it all together. And then optionally, you're also going to want three little rubber floor pieces to be cut to be put on the bottom, also at one foot, 17 inches, and one foot. Um, but that is 100% not needed. It's just a little nice to add a little bit of extra grip. That being said, let's get into the how-to. All right, for step one, all you're gonna need are your wooden cuts, and all we're gonna do is we're going to place them as if we were building the final product. So, you're gonna take your two edge pieces, set them apart from each other, take the middle bottom piece, set it in between, push these in towards each other, then you're gonna put this flat down on. If your middle piece isn't cut exactly the length you want it, like I said, our prototype is gonna be a little off, then you're just gonna take these side pieces, push them out so that they are flush, basically meaning even with the edge of each side. And if there's a little space in the middle, that's okay. Uh, hopefully it looks closer to this, but if it looks like this, it's still gonna work. Um, so once it's all in place, we're gonna move on to step two, which is drilling it all into place. So with step two, the next thing we're gonna be doing is just drilling everything into place. Uh, the main thing with this is you just wanna make sure everything is nice and flush and stays that way while you're drilling it in. If you're fine with eyeballing it, you just wanna make sure that this top piece is pretty close to being in the middle of these two edge pieces. Again, notice this. If you're really finicky and you want it to be perfect, you can take a measuring tape, measure both sides, and if they are the exact same length, then you're pretty much center in the middle. If one side is longer than the other, then you're going to move it to adjust that length. So, seeing that this is pretty close to in the middle, I'm just gonna go ahead and put my first screw in. I'm gonna put one foot there to hold this piece into place. Drill this in. And that's all good. So, while there's only one screw in place, I can still move this wood around in case I need to make any adjustments or fixes. So, making sure that this is also very center. I'm then gonna put one screw over onto this side so that they both stay center. So, now both of these can move around on the base a little bit, but they're gonna stay in place. Then, I'm gonna scoot middle piece into place. Screw down into this. That's in place. Now, all of these are generally in the placement that I want them to be. I'm gonna to continue to make sure that everything is flush, everything is good, looks like it is. I'm gonna make a tiny adjustment right there. And now I'm gonna to start to put all of the rest of the screws into place so that everything stops moving and gets nice and stuck. And now, for the most part, you have your whole precision trainer all put together. And that's about it for at least getting the whole thing stuck together. 
All right, for the optional step three of applying the rubber, what you would do is you take your bare piece that does not have the bottom pieces on it yet, and you have your rubber cut to one foot, 17 inches, and one foot. Um, and what you're gonna do is you take this rubber and you're going to apply some form of glue onto the rubber, the stronger the better. Then you're gonna slap that piece down onto the wood. Then you're gonna take a screw that is no longer than half an inch to three fourths inch so that it doesn't stick out at any parts. And you're going to drill in all four corners of where the piece would be put on. And then you're also going to drill in the center just to kind of keep the whole thing into place. Uh, then you're going to do that for all three pieces, just like you'll notice we've done here. Then you're going to put something heavy onto it just so that the glue is nice and stuck down onto the wood. And then you're going to give it time to dry. However much time the glue needs, typically you're looking at 12 to 24 hours based on the glue, sometimes maybe five minutes. Um, then once the glue has dried and your screws are already set in place, you're gonna be done and that's the whole process. All right, so basic tips for while you're building this is one important thing is make sure that the screws you are using are on the top half long enough to go down and meet the bottom half to sink them down together. If your screw isn't long enough to go through this first piece and into the second piece, it's not gonna keep them together obviously. Then for the bottom half, for the black floor, if you're using that, just make sure your screws are small enough to not poke through this piece right here, which again is gonna be about half an inch to three fourths of an inch, preferably. Um, besides that, if you do want to paint it, which can help make things a bit grippier, just make sure that you're using a gripped or textured like paint. The type of paint we use is called a textured deck over. Um, we think it's really useful and that is about it for tips overall. If at any point anything breaks, uh, just replace the one piece that breaks and the whole thing will continue to work. Um, if the whole thing does not look very pretty, that's okay. As long as everything is put together, is tight, and is working the way it needs to, the, the precision trainer is gonna work exactly as you need it. Um, so that's everything. You should be able to build this all on your own now. All right, so that's everything. Thank you guys for watching. Hopefully this helps you with your home training and I will see you guys in the next Thin Build video.